Hopefully the battery's left. Can I hold the camera? No, I don't do it. Well, I'm going to record it anyway. Yeah, if you guys want to record me anytime, you're free to do that. I'm going to record you right now. Isn't it like illegal to record students like without their consent? Like record a student without their consent? Uh, not in school. Really? Mm -hmm. What if they didn't I mean, sign the little booklet thing? No, I can't. I can't like have a hidden camera. No, but if I'm in your face and I need you to go to class and you're not going to class, the only way to get you to move is video crew tape. You not doing it, then yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be good. All right. Um, Martin wants to go to the office. Hey. I'm a photographer. Very interesting. Anyway, so this video we're going to watch. I want you to take notes on it. Try and get at least three or four important concepts behind it. And if you don't have paper or you got the computers, I want you responding up here on our back channel. Um, but this is talking about more about the details behind what a theory is and why it's significant um, in science. It's okay. Mr. Taylor, just know you're the best. Jesus, Taylor. Isn't evolution just a theory? It is a common misconception among non-scientists that evolution is just a theory. But I think that comes from them thinking that a theory is sort of a, a careless idea that really doesn't have a lot of evidence. It's probably wrong anyway. In everyday language, um, a theory it basically is a hunch or a guess. But in science, it is not. Theories are the heart of science. They pull together observations, laws, hypotheses, and inferences into coherent explanations for the great mysteries of the universe. In the 1800s, Charles Darwin observed the enormous diversity of life on Earth and set out to explain it. From the evidence he collected, Darwin developed his theory of evolution by natural selection. The theory that explains how new species originate. If the globe has undergone such profound changes in its history, geologically, surely all living creatures must have changed with it to adapt to their new conditions. Well, otherwise they would have perished. What theory does is it draws the ideas together, it draws observations together, and makes sense of them to allow you to make expectations. That's what theory is. And then we go and test those expectations. People used to believe that the sun revolved around the Earth because that's how it looked. Over time, the steady accumulation of evidence supported a different theory, that the Earth and other planets revolve around the sun. And what about gravity? It's just a theory. I don't believe in it. A lot of people seem to think that you need to be able to see something directly in order to accept it as a, a good scientific idea. But in reality, all you're seeing when you see a book falling are the effects of gravity. You're not really seeing gravity itself. Gravity is something, in terms of gravitation theory, it's something that we have yet to fully explain. Even so, we still rely on theories to make predictions that help us conduct our lives. To travel, to heal the sick, and to explore the universe. Before anyone had ever traveled to the moon, NASA scientists applied gravitation theory to predict what it would be like to move in a lunar environment. Predictions 
like these are called inferences. An inference is a conclusion you can draw from the available evidence. If I place this cube on the table, and you have the 5 and the 1 and the 3 and the 6 and the 4, what would you say is on the bottom? What's on the bottom? Six. 5. Again, you have the 5 and the 1 and the 3 and the 6 and the 4. One. Two. 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 Do you have to see it to know it's there? No. No, no you can tell by the evidence. You can infer by looking at the data that's uh, the observable data that number two would be at the bottom. She called every number. Charles Darwin inferred from the evidence available to him that all living creatures, including humans, descended from a common ancestor. I think it's more like a tree. A tree of life. Each new species is a new shoot that springs from the parent tree. These new shoots branch out and develop in their turn and so on. Some branches die out, others keep developing. The trunk, the ancient common ancestor. Today, scientists continue to find evidence that supports Darwin's common ancestor inference in the fossil record and in genes. With new discoveries, details of scientific theories are refined, and scientists are comfortable with the notion that theories are constantly challenged and amended. That's the nature of science. If apples suddenly start rising, you can be sure that some aspect of gravitation theory will change. But science will not reject the very idea that there is a force called gravity. New discoveries may also refine elements of the theory of evolution by natural selection. But the notion that the Earth and its inhabitants have evolved from a common ancestor will not change. Alright. Alright, so discuss with your neighbor again, real quick, the definition of so, uh, theory. Mm -hmm. okay. So, theory is okay, so and how does it affect what we understand? Forget, like, the rest. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, but, like, you do it when I was starting off, and I would forget, like, the rest. I just look at it. Turn it a little bit so it's <laughs> that word makes all the difference. That's a great, a great comment. Because it does. It makes all the difference in the world when it comes to understanding evolution. Alright guys, so what, what is a theory? An idea or a A concept that can be tested repeatedly. Okay, a concept that can be tested repeatedly. That's a good way to look at it. How else? An explanation that's been tested. Anything else? Okay, so theories are pretty significant. So what we want to do now, yeah. Is there any? What's the most like the newest theory that they came up with? Uh, the most recent one I've heard of is string theory. String theory. String theory is about how you can combine combine the idea of the uh, light as a particle or light as a wave. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. I've heard it. I've, heard, I've read some stuff and heard some stuff discussed about it. And it's it's pretty abstract though. So okay. if you want something that's really gonna wrap your or mess up your brain, go ahead and. Okay. Cool. String <laughs> yeah. theory. String theory. It'll make you think. It's right. pretty crazy stuff. All right. So what I want us to do now is talk to our neighbors, and we need to discuss the concept of natural selection. And in terms of natural selection, what we're talking about, first of all, is survival of the fittest. Okay? So with your neighbors, try and come up with a few ideas of what survival of the fittest means. Okay? So write down what does survival of the fittest mean and talk to your neighbors and, and write down some ideas. Okay? What does survival of the fittest mean? Only the, only the strong survive. Did you hear what he said? Only the strong survive. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. Who's the fittest? 
Survival is the baddest. What do you think, Claudio? Claudio's a man. Oh, do we? Do we? Do we? Hey, wake up. F I T T E S T. So, like, if a bird has a small beak, and a bird has a big beak, and there's big seeds, the big beak will survive. It seems like I'm dealing with it all right. But what if the small beak is faster than a big beak? And it takes all the food, and he needs the big beak to be hungry. The big beak will eat them. Alright, good guys. The tinier, the faster you can run. Let me bring to light a discussion that happened. It's slow, sir. Okay? Kevin said. Kevin said, so survival of the fittest means if there's a bird with a small beak and a bird with a big beak and there's big seeds, then the big beak bird survives. <laughs> and Laquan said, well, it depends on the food. Okay? Are those big seeds hard shelled? Are they soft shelled? What, what's the situation? And that's exactly the point of this. Okay? So, what else does survival of the fittest mean? All right, what you guys put? If you're weak, you're died, unless you wit. Wit? Unless you have wit. Oh, wit. And if you are. Strong, you were more likely to survive. Okay, so right here we're thinking strong survives. Survival fitness is one that are prepared, intelligent, creative, and can handle yourself and can survive. Okay, survival fitness only the best survive against all the rest. Okay, so we got some we got some good ideas of what survival of fitness means. Okay, does it always have to be the strongest though? Not really. Oh. The okay. most, the what, most well suited for their environment. The most well suited for their environment. Okay, so there are four parts to natural selection. We're going to watch another short video, discuss it, and we're going to do an activity uh, to try and help us understand better what natural selection in evolution is. All right. So you'll need to get down the four main points of natural selection, and they'll repeat it a few times and show several examples. So uh, don't stress if you don't get it the first time through. Why is somebody breathing hard over there? <laughs> Jacob, look it up. <laughs> Oh, How does evolution really work? The primary way that evolution occurs is through the action of natural selection. That is, populations change in response to environmental pressures, and they become adapted to new conditions, and they change over time. Following Charles Darwin's lead, biologist Chris Schneider and his colleagues traveled to Ecuador to study the evolution of several animal species. This lush rainforest is a natural laboratory for ongoing investigation of evolutionary theory. Natural selection is at the core of their research on hummingbirds. In our research, we're trying to understand how these species are running. This is Darwin's fundamental question. On the origin of species, how do new species arise? And what we're finding is that natural selection seems to be an incredibly important. Is there a question? Are you sure? No, they were saying Miss Hine is obsessed with hummingbirds, and oh, she yeah. is. She does. She likes hummingbirds yeah. a lot. Factor in generating new species. Natural selection, the key evolutionary mechanism Darwin identified, is really four processes. Genetic variation, overproduction of offspring, struggle for existence, and differential survival and reproduction. Okay, what do you guys think genetic variation means? Mutation. It oh, could variation. be. And also, what happens during meiosis? Oh, shares different DNA. Yeah, the DNA gets mixed up a lot, doesn't it? That's yeah. why you look different than your brother and sister. I look okay. like my what about sister. overproduction of offspring? A lot of babies. They, they eat too much resources. Mm -hmm. I thought offspring was for like kids. I mean, like. It's more babies are produced than can survive. Yeah. That can't? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll show us, we'll talk about some examples of that in a few minutes. First, genetic variation. Individuals within a species vary from one to the other. For evolution to work by natural selection, 
The characteristics that give an individual an advantage in a certain environment have to be passed on from one generation to the next. And in hummingbirds, Bill Link seems to, seems to have a very strong genetic basis. That is, if two parents mate and both of those parents have long bills, their offspring will have long bills. If those parents have shorter bills, their offspring will have shorter bills. Second, there is overproduction of offspring. Darwin realized that natural selection would operate because individuals uh, in natural populations tend to produce more offspring than can survive. For example, hummingbirds over their lifetime will often produce dozens of offspring, but only one or two of those individuals are likely to survive. The third factor in natural selection is the struggle for existence, and that leads to differential survival and reproduction. In any population, whether it's plants or animals or whatever, this excess production of individuals results in this, in what Darwin called the struggle for existence. And what he had in mind there, I think, was the competition for food and space uh, and mates as well. Hummingbirds compete for nectar. They often compete very fiercely for limited resources, natural selection will favor individuals that, that are more efficient at getting nectar. Natural selection will result in changes in wing shape that allow hummingbirds to fly uh, longer distances, for instance, or maybe to be more maneuverable, uh, to maneuver around flowers and get nectar more efficiently. And probably most importantly, it'll affect the length and shape of the bill. Bill measurements. In the case of hummingbirds, we know that um, a one or two millimeter change in length can have profound differences on how efficiently that bird feeds and how well it survives. Individual survivors are more likely to reproduce and pass on their advantageous as well as other genes to their offspring. In an environment with long flowers, having a long bill is an advantageous trait not necessarily the absolute best trait always, just a better one in this environment. Hummingbirds with small bills may not survive, and eventually there will only be hummingbirds with long bills. Over a long period of time, the entire population of hummingbirds adapts to the shape and size of the flowers that exist in that environment. If you're in the woods and you're walking with another person and you come on a bear and the bear chases you, you don't have to be faster than the bear. Why don't you have to be faster than the bear? Because you, you can be faster, faster than the person. person. You just gotta be faster than your friend. Diego. Because your friend gets eaten, and what happens? The bear's full. You survive, right? That'd be messed up, so I'm going with Laquan. Well, it's better than having you both die. <laughs> I'm going to the rules with Laquan. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Yeah. What if you're both faster than the bear? Because the bear eats him, and you get away. What if you're both faster than the bear? Species cannot develop the adaptations that benefit them in their lifetimes. So Just as you cannot make your arm longer to reach a book on the shelf up high, individual small-billed hummingbirds that move into an area where there are longer flowers can't make their bills longer. Their bill length is determined by the DNA they inherited from their parents. Three. Schneider uses hummingbird DNA sequences to reconstruct their evolution. All right, that covers enough of that. What, so, what we need. What are they doing? They're uh, taking the DNA to see how they've changed over over uh, so many years and whatnot. What's really interesting is uh, trying to be funny, but it's actually true. If you guys watch The Walking Dead or any other zombie show, you don't have to be faster than zombies. You got to be faster than your friend. Like that bad dude, the shank killed. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. That's exactly right. Like the, the fat dude that Shane killed, Shane would never gotten away if he had tried to help keep that guy alive. Yeah. Okay, so the fat guy got shot in the leg, fell down, the zombies ate him, and Shane got away. Okay? Fortunately, most of us don't live in a world that's like that right now. So that's good. That's good for us. That's right now. That's right. We're still safe. Okay, so let's look at let's look for example wait, at uh, I have a question. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Since we have like a stable lifestyle, we won't ever evolve. <laughs> well, most scientists will say that we're still evolving. Um Possibly. I mean, that's that'd be a great something to look up and share with us for extra credit. Um, 
Anyway, so let's talk about uh, one of the major points of, is overproduction of offspring. If more babies are produced and can survive, which ones are going to survive? The ones, the, best best the ones best suited for that environment. Okay, we're going to see an example of this here in just a minute. But uh, let's say, does it always mean the strongest and the fastest? No. The ones with the one hair on the forehead. <laughs> That's right, the ones with the hair on their forehead. They get all the, they get all the honeys. Um, but if you think about it, it can also be the slowest. What happens when turtles come out of their hole, the sea turtles? They go running for the water, right? What do they have to avoid? Seagulls and all sorts of stuff. So let's say I'm a particularly lazy turtle. So I just chill in the nest while everybody's leaving. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? By the time you leave, all the birds will be full. Exactly. By the time I leave, all the birds are full and gone, and I get a free walk to the to the water. Yeah. So who survived? You. The lazy bum. Okay. So they only get them when they're walking? As soon as they come out of the nest, they see them, they start eating. But when they're full, they leave. Okay? Yeah, that's right. It's my one hair horn. How are you? All right. Well, let's go back and try an example of this. Um, of how natural selection can affect a population of naked rabbits. I'm a naked rabbit. Naked rabbit? Yes. Yeah, I'll show you. Come on back. Uh, go ahead and plug it, bring it back, and just don't stop the recording. Just pop that out and come on back. Okay, line up on the side here so you can see what I'm doing. Season two memories. Hold on, man. You know how it is. You should have just shot his ass. Come on over here. Come on. Who's that? Pistol. See, now, now they're out of bullets like every other day. What? That's true. On uh, Walking Dead. Uh, actually, watch guys sit on the table so we, you don't have to hold it and just point it so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we, um, what we have here is remember we're, we talk about genotypes and phenotypes. Okay? Um, remind me what a genotype is. <laughs> Genetic hey. makeup. It's <laughs> so the genetic makeup. What do we when I if I write a genotype on the board? What do you see? Letters. Big you see letters. letters and okay, letters. the alleles, right? So what we're doing today is we're going to have some rabbits, and each rabbit has two alleles, and we're going to say that the big or the black one represents the black one represents uh, big F for fur, and the red one's going to represent little f for naked. Okay. So some of these rabbits are born without fur. So, what would be the genotype of two black? Fur. Fur. F, F. Genotype. Big F, big F. What about a black and a red? Big F, little F, and a red and a red? Little F. Good. So, what would the phenotype be? Of the fur. 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 No fur. Naked. Or fur. No fur. Right. So, these would be the same geno or phenotype in this one. Would this one survive winter? No. no. Probably not very well. Right. So... They, they die, and so they're eliminated from the population. That gene is gone, and so I'm just left with these. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to get 11 red and 11 black. Hold on. And you're going to put them all together, and you're going to mate them. And the way you mate them is you don't look. You pull out two. You say, okay. Here I've got. All righty. <laughs> so you pull out two, and if they survive, they survive. You keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and you, you make sure to line them up. And you're going to see how many generations it takes before you eliminate all the red. Okay, so when that generation's done, you've sorted them all, then you put them all back together, and they're gone, and you start picking again. So we want to see how many generations it takes to eliminate that gene from the, from the population. Okay? So get uh, get a group of two or three or four or three or four probably better. Get uh, eleven red and eleven black. Yuli. Okay. And I want you guys keeping the cameras going, and we're gonna interview some of these people and see what's happening. Okay. How do you, oh, I'm about to say, how do you pop that off? Yeah. Let's go.
Come on, guys, get your 11. Let's go. Who's 11 of each. Go somewhere else on the counters or tables. So we just interview interview anybody. Yeah, just wait a few minutes while they're getting it set up, okay. and then just go to one group and just stay there to see what they're doing. Huh? Does it matter what color we? Ten of each. So you need eleven of red, eleven of black. Okay. What did I do? <laughs> Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, Miss Taylor, this thing cut off. Like, how it cut off? It just cut off. Oh, that one died. It's said unable to connect to network. Yeah. I'm going to go get a fit. 11 of each. 11 of each, right? Hey, uh, Harley, let me see your camera. Make sure the battery's still surviving. Yeah, it looks like it's all right. This one died. We didn't die, it just stopped working. All right, you're doing good. Keep it up. <laughs> so just say like, now we just take out the dead ones and then we just yeah, take you eliminate the dead ones, move them out of the gene pool, and you mix them up again. You're dead, and you're freaking dead. Get out, you. No, we gotta That's just messed up, though. Hey, man, I didn't kill them. Make sure you're not looking. I know. So make it random. I know, look, I've been going like this. Just make it random. Give <laughs> <laughs> other people a chance, too. Go, I know, we've been doing that. Our hands are so soft. Your hands are so wet. <laughs> they really are. on. <laughs> oh man, my dread fell out. <laughs> Dude, the camera's facing us, bro. What does it matter? What does it matter? It's not like I'm saying anything happy. What's up, bro? He called me hot. I didn't say that. So we just pick two random people. All right, so what happens? Okay, first two. What do we do now? <laughs> So black and red. Oh, one more time. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna line yeah. them up. Now your turn. <laughs> Get them. Don't look. No! <laughs> Not until you picked all of them and got them out. You gotta pair up all of the fuzzies. When they're all paired up, that's when you eliminate the ones that are. Why is everybody naked. getting that? Pair them all up first. You can't see. Look into my eyes. Hi. Oh my god. All right, what do we do now? All right, so where's the ones that are that died? Okay. Eliminate them from the We're population. Making babies. Okay, so that's your first generation. Now mix those up and do it again. Can't look. Can't look. <laughs> Ah, oh, so I'm so surprised. Oh, 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 Okay, keep going. Mr. Taylor, it took us five tries. So, do we do it again? Yes. So, five generations for you guys? Yeah. Why, why can't you? Yeah, Avenger not even required. You can't do that. Okay, so it's the trade. So, 
if the gene is still on the floor, yeah, done. so that what does that make this rabbit? But what's special about this rabbit? Okay. So now what? So doing now what? We're talking about how it's now all this and together we're making a red That's right. Someone this is Taylor. Exactly that. So cool. So now all going to be redheads. What? So they're dead now. How many times? I mean, still redheads. Well, it's funny. We got five generations to make no more redheads. But one is still carrier. See like this. Sorry, bye Harley. Bye Harley. Okay, now you make your one. If they start off like that, Kevin, that's just so random. Why don't you have a camera on yourself? Keep on this, okay? So what did you guys do? It took it took a total of nine generations to eliminate all of the naked rabbits. <laughs> there's no such so, there's no such so, it's not Australian, it's British. Now there's no such so thing as a naked rabbit in our habitat. Nine generations is us. Alright, it's a nine generation. So what is your opinion? What is your opinion? My opinion is not her opinion. And then remember how many generations you had. No, I've had one so far. Let's tell her. Let's tell her. Want me to get closer? You're good. Okay. Extinct what? Alicia. Extinct what? Cloning extinct animals. How long does this have to be? What happened? No. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you can't. You can stay on if you want. Samara, oh, snuffing. Uh, no, okay. Samara, so Samara has got it on. Oh, Wait on there. Yeah. Samara, bitch, slap. Hurry. Fuck, honey, I don't know you got. To... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that could be a funny sound. Man, they might not know what it means. Three, five, five, five. Oh, curse. You curse. Not the iPod 5 or the iPhone? I'm not, but they can hear you. And he's going to show everybody. He's going to show the board. Three, two, one. All right. So, you, what do you see here? Numbers. Very good. Oh, a leaf plot. No, well, what what information do we have here? The generations. Generations. Yeah. generations, and is there a difference between yeah. people's generations? Yeah. 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 These two are fairly common. This one, these two are, are Lone Stars, at least three. Um, and so you can see that, well, why would it be different? How come it's not the same for every group? Because everybody's different. Why is it varied? I'm different. Because it's random, it's not. There's a bit of randomness to it. That's right. Okay. Okay. So when when mating occurs, when mating occurs, the the way the genes line up together is kind of random. Not completely random, but pretty close. And sometimes you have mutations which add extra differences, like my mutated hair on my forehead, um, and therefore you get different results. Okay. So, what happened to the population of rabbits? What happened to the naked gene? It died. It was slowly eliminated. Who had one left at the end? Everybody. Who knows why you had one left? Because there wasn't another one to mate with it. How many did I have you pick? Eleven. Eleven. I deliberately have you choose eleven 